Yo, thank you for clicking on the video. I'm Who's Mans. I, I just like football. I'm here to teach you the X's and O's of the game. I'm not here to teach you the glitches and the, and the exploits and things like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If you guys are new, go ahead, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you never miss an upload. And let's get into it. Shout out to everybody that's come through recently and uh, subscribe to the channel. If you guys are looking for just a pretty easy, simple offense to run, definitely check out the um, air raid offense. There's not a lot of cheese that you have to worry about in this one. I'm going straight up, you know, realistic with how we're running this offense. So there's usually not going to be a lot of um, tags and things like that or audibles or hot routes, however you guys want to call it. Um, there's not going to be a lot of tags that you'll have to memorize and do this against this. These plays are set up you know a very specific reason so we're going to start out with 92 or the mesh um, this is out of the formation green rip and there's a few things that you need to know before running this play circle shackleford he's running a corner out i'll tell you this there's a couple of things that you can do put him on a speed out you can put him on a deep dig there's a ton of things that you can do with him however we're just going to keep him on that corner route because i just wanted to show you guys a few things but that's the alert if you're seeing cover three or you see him backed off quite a bit and you think that you can get that in there because he's in a deep third assignment definitely that is going to be your alert now the main meat and potatoes of this play is the easiest bit is going to be the mesh you are going to have one deep mesh and one guy running underneath and they should be close enough to like high five when they run by it's run that way for a very specific reason it's there to create a rub what do you mean by that almost like an artificial pick now how you read this is you look at the nickel defender over x if he goes inside to run with x then you're going to look outside to r1 and if he stays outside or if he you know, doesn't move at all, then you're going to look inside to the X and square. Now, with these mesh routes, <clears throat> if you don't touch them against zone, they will hitch up. You know, where you see the, the routes kind of bend, they should hitch up right there. It's just because the, that should be a soft spot in the zone. So we're going to run this play, and I'll show you guys what I mean. So you see he goes inside, easy. You go outside. Football in general is about leverage. And that's why I like NCAA a lot more. I noticed that players that are out, out leveraged can't just warp this year. It seems like they've kind of respected that a little bit more this year. All right, so now we're playing against Tampa 2. As you see, that cornerback, my alert, he is closer to the line of scrimmage i'm not liking that as much even if i put him on a speed out whatever but i'm going to keep him on the corner and i'm going to read that nickel again he goes inside let's go underneath make a man miss and you can pick up a nice nice yardage there once again if it makes it easier throw him into that flat route there hit the back and that's four yards right there you do that three times, you have yourself a first down. All right, so this is cover two man. It's going to be a little easier to do this in the instant replay, and there's a few things that I want to show you. So now we're looking at this uh, nickel. You see he goes inside, but at the same time, when he goes inside, I then look to the running back. I'm not just throwing it because he goes inside. I also look at this linebacker as well. He goes outside. So what does that mean? I know this is man. I go back to my mesh and this is what I talk about with the picks right there you see it happening right here that creates separation and that's the reason why they run so close is these corners in man two man at the very least they're in a trail technique so they're gonna try to stay behind and they're kind of keeping an eye on the wide receiver and the quarterback so they're kind of looking this way and next thing you know, they run into each other by accident. And you see by the time they separate past each other, I like the look of this better because he had better separation from that nickel than two does from the <clears throat> other corner over there. So I throw that and you see why this route to the flat is so good. 
it just creates so much space right here in the middle. He gets it, turns up field. That's about a 16-yard gain. All right, the next concept we're going to look at is shallow cross. Usually, I like to put my running back on a table route. You can also throw him on a swing route. doesn't really matter. Whatever you feel more comfortable with from your running back, um, you can definitely run that. But this is a really nice play to read. I usually read this X to triangle to square. Same similar read that you're looking at from the nickel. If he goes inside, you go outside. If he stays out outside, then you can look and just read the shallow. Do the linebackers take the shallow or do they take the deep dig? This is an easy one. He stays outside. They take a minute to really get that deep dig. So I'm going to take the drag. And you're going to see what I mean there. That dig took a little bit of time to develop. And they're also five yards off the line. So I'm going to take my drag. You see there, I pick up about 16 yards. Running this against Tampa 2, just to you know, give you guys an example of what some of this stuff looks like. Goes inside. I'm taking the drag route. It's about seven yards there. Let's play this against cover one. So the running back out to the flat. And you see there, inaccurate throw, but it's easy to read. There's man. And look at that. Ton of space. Throw it to grass. Now, there are times where you will be able to throw that post. Um, against cover one, I like it because... <clears throat> and I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys now. Cover one, how they have this programmed is this corner is going to have outside leverage. And I throw this on the break. So as soon as I see there's a little key and the more you run it, the better you'll see it. But he makes this move right here. You should see that my quarterback is winding up already. And his back is turned. He gets across his face right there and I can't fit that in. And I throw a bullet down because I want, as you see, my receiver to be able to catch it low and fall without getting blasted. There is wear and tear this year. Uh, terrier, terrier. We can get a bit sharper. So if you want, I guess you can re hot route him on an actual post. And it should work the same. But as you see, the post needs to be a little deeper. So we'll put him on that. And extend the post just a bit. And that post seems to be a bit more at an angle, which is something I like as opposed to the post that they have him. This is a skinny post. And you see it's harder to get it in there. He doesn't run it as as angled. But there's a reason for that. You don't want it to be, you know, too in the way of the dig. Next is gonna be 618 or your stick. So against single high, I like doing the dragon concept on the back end. As you see, this is what it looks like. But I'll put triangle on a flat route, and there you have your dragon concept on the back side. So uh, single high, you have two different sides that you can read. Or if you want, you can also have them on a uh, flat curl flat there. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to keep them as is for right now. And same exact kind of read this is why i like the air raid offense you're going to look at the nickel does he stay inside with the hitch you throw outside to the running back if he drifts outside to the running back you throw to the hitch so we're going to look at this right now he stayed inside a little bit to the running back or to the hitch so we hit the running back and you'll see what i mean you can make this a really quick read So you can see right here, you can make this a quick read or you can let this develop a little bit. But we see he hesitates inside. I have the leverage with the running back. I'm throwing it to the running back and I pick up a, a few yards. Even if he tackles me a little sooner, about right there, I could still get three, four yards. Running this against Tampa 2 so you guys can see. 
And once again, we get a few yards there, but this is a quick pass type scenario. You say you don't like it, throw it across the middle. So we'll go against cover one hole. We look, goes out, boom. And that's when I would usually hit my backside slant. As I look, no, no. And I throw it underneath. Like I throw it down. Next is 95. Um, I'll run it simply this way first. You're going to look at that Ohio on the left side, the streak in triangle. Uh, you read the the slot corner there. If he stay, if he goes outside, if he has outside leverage on that, then you're going to look. It's easy to read. Square, triangle, X, circle, R1. That's your progression read there. So I'm going to look. He has good leverage. And on that one. So now we're running this against Tampa 2. I look. He has outside coverage. And you got to be careful with that for that reason. That's why I let this one develop a little bit. So if you believe that you're going against cover 2 zone, put them on a speed out. Hot route them to a speed out. Um, or just to an out, I suppose. And it makes that read a little easier. Boom. So you can fit that in there. So that is one read that you can, you know, make. This is against cover one man. We're going to put him on a speed out like that. He has leverage. That was a bad throw. Or you can keep him. Cover one. Boom. We're going to run this against cover two man as well. So I look. Boom. Okay, maybe I don't like that. Oh, he's coming open. Make my next make my next read. <clears throat> so next one is we're going to look at eight. You have a snag on the right side, and then you have your lion concept on the left once again same read you're gonna look at the slot on the right side does he go inside to the snag route by circle or does he go outside to the running back so we're gonna look he goes inside i'm gonna hit the running back route late but look at this he goes inside so I'm going to hit this running back, boom, pick up my nice yards there. And that was a gain of like six. So he goes inside, boom, hit the running back, 10 yards, 11 yards right there. Easy. Here we go. Looking at Tampa 2. Run it again. He drifts back. He's to the flat. Let me. Boom. And I took a little bit more time to throw that one <clears throat> because I know some of you guys are going to have to, you know, sit there and think about it. Like, okay, you know what? But I'm telling you guys, the more you run this, the easier it is to see what's going on. Okay, he's to the flat. I'm throwing that. Boom. So now we're looking at cover one hole. Same thing. He backs up. But look at that. <clears throat> creates a nice little rub now what I look at for cover one is I usually see that the the cornerback will run over when I look at this I see he's backing up a little bit but I also see that this cornerback and usually the dead giveaways are always going to be the linebackers linebackers running with the running back so I know this is going to be <clears throat> nice but you see the cornerback runs into him at this point this safety not going to be able to get over there in time and i trust this corner route so i'm throwing it to the corner route and once again just say you are uncomfortable with making those kinds of reads on the right side give yourself a dragon concept anytime you see one high just say you look at that nah, i don't like that uh fit it in there I beg your pardon. Cover two man. We're going to look. Oh, I'm taking the running back every time. The one thing you can do, do something like this. We're moving on to 617. This one is a pretty interesting one. 
I've seen it taught to where you have two slants on the back side. Um, pretty easy one. I kind of like it this way as well. Once again, you're reading the slot on the left side there. If he goes, uh, if he has outside leverage, then you look backside. If he has inside leverage, <clears throat> you're gonna want to make that throw. And he gets batted down at the line, of course. So I look. I don't like that. I'm throwing it underneath, and of course, I break a tackle away. Now we're gonna look at Tampa two. It's sometimes against Tampa 2, if I think it's Tampa 2 on that Ohio concept out there. I'll wait a second. I'll wait a second on that throw. Seven is a pretty underrated play, I think. Even if you throw the slants on the backside I, and on Tampa 2, like, I don't like that. I don't like that. Boom. Cover one hole. I'm going to look. Pushing me inside. Boom. <clears throat> Come on, set. I don't like that side. I'm gonna hit the back side. Three, Cover two man. Set. Look. Eh. I like this throw against cover two man. Cobra. He's already playing inside leverage. Three, of course he gets bumped a little bit, but now once again I said this earlier. If I see a linebacker way out there. Um, what I might do is just send him straight to the flat on this table route. Like that. Now, obviously, give your wide receiver time to get off the line, but boom. I'm sending him to the flat now. Ninety three, not used as much. Still a really good play. Same thing you're looking. Wow, he threw a bullet. Okay, same thing. You're looking at the nickel. If he goes inside, you go outside. If he goes outside, you go inside. And you can hit X or R1. Circle is nice, too, because if you keep the linebackers underneath, you know, over top. So he goes, boom, I'm hitting outside. Pick up five yards, even though that was a bad throw. Usually, I like to give the running back a little bit more time. So he stays outside, hesitates a little bit, give it off to the running back, pick up five yards. And then we'll look at the, of course, get the wide receiver killed. But you you can throw that one. I like to throw it the second I see that linebacker step forward. So if I'm looking at this like, no, no, he steps forward. I angle it down, and I want to make sure that my wide receiver can catch that one right there. Calling this against Tampa 2. Same thing. Does he go inside? He goes inside. I'm hitting the running back. Five yards, six yards, almost 10 right there. Same thing. I'm looking. Okay, maybe I don't like that. Uh, right in the middle of the zone. When you start throwing these balls with, with anticipation, man, it makes these reads a lot easier. And some people are going to be like, yo, I don't know what to do. On this back side... This one's a little easier to, to complete because the flat defender is, oh my gosh, I broke like six billion tackles. The flat defender is pushed inside so you can fit it over top. The safety has to respect the um, route going deep by number one, cutting inside, and you'll see what I mean. So this route going inside pushes that flat defender inside a bit. The safety has to respect number one because you see him go deep first. He's still going to the flat. Now he cuts up. Cornerback is inside. All you have to do is loft it over top right here, which I should catch it about. And I was just about right. And with revamp passing, I'm telling y'all, it's so much easier. I literally pass lead it directly to the side. So as soon as he cuts... Pass lead it directly to the side, put some loft on it, and I can get it over the cornerback's head every time. Even when I throw it a little bit harder, I still get it over his head. <clears throat> Cover one hole. Once again, like I said, I don't like looking at this left side. Single high. I look. He goes outside. Boom. 
This one is, to me, the easiest one to read against cover one man, especially if you have a really good wide receiver. But I'll look. Oh, he's going straight to the side. I'm throwing this almost every time. The corners in cover one have outside leverage. Now, if they do switch to inside leverage, that throw is going to be a lot different. But I do like this sit route. So maybe you have to let it sit a little bit longer before you throw it. I'm throwing it too quickly. Boom. So that's cover one. This is against cover two man. I look. I'm telling you guys, every time I'm giving it to the running back if I see that. Cover two man. I see it. No, no. I'm throwing it outside. So we're going to figure out this throw. So there's that throw. So, so it's more at like 10 o'clock. Now, this isn't going to be this easy against, you know, dominant slots. You have four verts. Now, what makes this better is if you can have him go to the flat. Like, so you read it outside in. So it's looking like that left side's getting more open. Send him out there. Boom. Hit the seams, especially in cover three. But you can look here and just say you're looking at the left side. Don't be afraid to hit your check down. All right, man. So that's really it with the Air Raid playbook. Um, you just go in there and have fun. I would recommend going into the tempo adjustment, no huddle. I mean, I guess you can do turbo if you want, but no huddle. And it just makes it so much harder to defend. There's so many different things you can do. There's a ton of different playbooks that have the air raid and um yeah man it's a fun playbook to use definitely get in there and try it and especially with the randy and different things like that and you know, using your inside zones it's it's nice it's fun so hopefully this video helped you guys um like i always say give it to god prayer requests throw them in the comment section below once again shout out to all the people that just subscribe if you were looking for our offense hopefully this is something that you know looks interesting to you go in the playbook and look at all the different concepts that are similar you know you see 95 it's easy to find 95 um you know you have green rip there uh and then you got where's nine there's another 95 in here yeah, 85 85 95 is there as well so you like i said you got 95 there and 95 there there's plenty of different places to do it so yeah um see you guys next time